This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern Podcast. I am Phil, joining me as always, Master of the Core it is. I am Will, hey everyone. And he's probably allowed to the cricket stuff and say, and... No one, because we discussed it. I, we, we were talking about it on, you know, on the show last week. But yes, uh, we're recording Tuesday, May 11th. Yes, uh, the young Davy Coda was born this morning, 3:40, I believe, it was 3:42 a.m. So, <laughs> so yes, uh, that is that is why that. All well wishes to the family, and uh, I see some. Uh, because I, because I put stuff up on social media, and then I saw uh, a certain mustached Australian had to throw his two cents in. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Sausage. Oh, I got some new drops of him. Sucking the life force. Ah, yeah, it's just me and him on Sunday. Yeah, I got a nice, got some nice clean drops. It's a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat. Oh, uh, Ray. He's like, wait, come on. We're just talking about Kona. <laughs> so, yes, congratulations to Matt and Yale. Yeah, congrats. Yay. About a week late. I was going to say, I think some of those, I guess some, a lot of first children are late. I know Luca was a week late. You, you had well, twins, so, of course. The, yeah, you know, that was you're too late. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, did they have? They chosen a name. Of course, they've chosen. Do we know the name? I believe. Yeah, he texted me this morning. Uh, is it? Um, um, uh, is it Kai? It's K A I. Is that Kai? Kai. I think so. Yeah. Uh, three. Yeah. Uh, three forty-two a.m. Seven point one pounds. Twenty ounce. Uh, twenty inches. Wow. Very cool. Yep. Yay. Their lives are way more interesting right now. <laughs> and please, whoever's listening, uh, God, uh, the Guardians of Oa, uh, whoever, whatever deity you believe in, uh, yes, please let this little girl look like her mother and not her father. Amen. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Your one look good on the table. Anyway, uh, so I think what's new? Oh, did you uh, did you get your Green Lantern number two yet? Uh, no, not yet. Ooh. But it should be on the way. Well, yeah, well, it was game changer at the end of that issue, kind of, kind of steering them towards that future state stuff that was going on in the beginning of the year. Uh. Uh. Yes, yeah, spoilers. I think what uh, a guardian is murdered. Well, the Guardian was murdered, yeah, in issue one, and they kind of catch okay. the killer. And then I'll, I'll try not to spoil. I won't spoil the end of the issue, but like the the Guardians kind of like because like the the United Planets they come to a deal where they like, they're gonna pull Green Lanterns from what is it like a third of their sectors or something and like reassign them. So hmm. it's all weird. And then there's like there's like no more ranks. Every Green Lantern's like equal now. Okay. There's no like well. guard and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then something big happens at the end. Okay. Cool. Something to but, look forward to. But uh, Sojourner shows up at the end, uh, you know, from Far Sector. So mm-hmm. has her, has number 12 of hers come out yet? I don't think it has, has it? Okay. No, that's what I'm saying. I wonder if this takes place after that or. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait till 12. <laughs> Might figure it out. Yeah. Uh, are you watching anything new on TV? Did you watch Invincible yet? Not yet. I'm gonna have to. Con- I'll have to do some convincing on that one. I think. 
<laughs> and we kind of looked at uh, Jupiter's legacy, but we're like, eh, no, nah, we'll, we're going to watch something else for now. I mean, yeah, we may I get around back to it, but yeah, I canceled my Netflix after the Marvel stuff. Cause like, I really didn't have, I really wasn't watching much on there. I was like, I'm like, even if I had, I don't know that Jupiter's legacy and just the look of it. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I were to watch that anyway. Uh, and I think I read that uh, Marvel is uh, consigning all of the pre WandaVision Falcon Winter Soldier shows, including Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., to their legacy, you know, non continuity type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I is think- funny because Nick Fury appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and so did Sif, right? <laughs> I, know. Well, I don't know if that's going to be like an alternate timeline or. <laughs> I mean, there was time travel in S.H.I.E.L.D., so unless they, like, knock themselves out of the main timeline or something. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> that, that last season was kind of wild. <laughs> oh, speaking of Marvel and your Green Lantern podcast, did you see, um, I guess, it was it this week or last week, they put out, like, the character posters for the Black Widow movie? Oh, I think I remember seeing that, yeah. Like, um, the, you know, like, you know, above the Black Widow, it says Scarlett Johansson, and above, you know, like, Red Guardian, it's like, who is that, David... Uh, Mm, yeah from stranger things yeah 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 yeah. but like over taskmaster there's no name so is that are they keeping a secret there i don't know that's interesting (laughs) i was talking to charlie about that i'm like i'm like is this is it somebody we've seen before or is it just gonna be like a snake eyes thing where it's like you're never gonna see the face and it's just like a bunch of stunt guys you know do it (laughs) (laughs) could be i guess we'll have to wait and see (laughs) But yeah, I was throwing all kinds of uh, theories on. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, what if it's Bucky? That's that's why he was so good with that shield and Falcon and Winter Soldier because he he was <laughs> throwing a shield around before that. Oh, but Taskmaster has photographic reflexes. That's his whole cool thing. I know, I know. <laughs> but I mean, look what they you know look at Ant Man and the Wasp. I mean, Ghost was nothing like the comics. I don't. That's true. Yeah. That's I'm like I'm like is it someone we've seen before? Is that why they're not telling us who's under that mask? I'm uh, speaking of. Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, Ghost is now the new Red Sonya, right? Yeah, uh, the actress. Mm-hmm. Yes, they cast her. Yes, in the Red Son- upcoming Red Sonya. Yeah. And then uh, what was it last? I think it was last, just last week. Yeah, there was a new uh, Red Sonya comic, Invincible Red Sonya. I didn't read it, but Lilith did, and she said it was good. Oh, cool! I'll have to check it out. It's by um, I think she said is it by uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, who were doing Harley Quinn for a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she said they always do really good stuff. Yeah. Well, I know Lilith wasn't thrilled with like a lot some of their uh Harley Quinn stuff, but yeah, she said the uh, Red Sonia stuff was good. Cool. Very cool. Trying to think of anything else. Um no, I think I've got um the first volume of Green Lantern season two to read. I still, I think I'll do that this week. It's uh, finally, it's finally taking some time off from the office. So hopefully I can get that read. Um, and the second volume, I don't think has come out yet of season two. Oh yeah. Wait, Oh, is it the volume? Is it volume one of season two? Yeah. The hardcover. Yeah. It also includes the black star three issue uh, series at the beginning, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Cause I, I had, if you like season one, you'll like season yeah season two. Part of me wants to just start read season one, book one, book two, then season two, book one, and then season two, book two. Just read the whole thing. I mean, if you have the time, that that'd be what like I mean. Well, twenty seven issues. <laughs> season two was twenty four. Yeah, that miniseries. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, if you had time on a weekend or something, yeah. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Just jump into Green Lantern for, you know, a few hours. <laughs> your, your wife's like, yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get up and do something. You know? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. You're a comic book writer. Be like, man, this is research, honey. <laughs> totally researched. I'm working, working real hard right now. I forget who we were talking to the one time. We were interviewing some comic book writer, and I forget which one, and they were like, you know, they were talking about reading a bunch of comics before they started a new run. Now I was like, oh, how great is that? I'd be like, you know, this is research for work, honey. You know, I'm just sitting here reading. <laughs> I'm blown yep. up on so and so. Yeah. Gotta look up those last appearances. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, anything new with you, Matt Kona? Yeah, yeah, um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's here in spirit. In spirit, yeah, definitely uh, in spirit. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Oh, tomorrow, I think Guardians, the next Guardians of the Galaxy issue comes out. Oh, cool. I hope we start getting some explanation around the new status quo for Quasar. That would be cool. I hope so, too, yeah. Like I said, I think we'll look at, we'll get three in, and then maybe we'll do the Qua, Quantum Zone annual. Mm-hmm. Um, did you read The Last Guardians of the Galaxy yet? I haven't had a chance. Okay. I've got it here in a stack somewhere. One of these stacks. Right there, I think, in that stack. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was going to say, I, I think I spoiled the Quasar stuff for you, so... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm standing. I'm still looking. I haven't seen anything uh, to pre-order that Quasar uh, figure yet. Yeah, uh, that would. I'm still looking forward to that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I just wonder how long you're going to make us wait because then when did they announce that? Like beginning of, was it beginning of the year? Yeah, was it like January, or February? <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm like, when are How long are they going to make us wait the pre-order? Hmm. I don't know. We could look. I guess we could go back and look in the in the Facebook group and see where it was. It was because it was posted in there, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That still doesn't answer my question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when are they going to let us order it? <laughs> I know. Oh, you know what else? I'm. Uh, I was tempted to pull the trigger on. Uh, well, they he's had them for a while at my comic shop. He has like a. Uh, Funko figures of the Fantastic Four. Cool. <laughs> and then a few weeks ago, they put out like a big Galactus Funko. I mean, it's like <laughs> giant. <laughs> probably like three, four times the size of a regular Funko. I was like, oh, I would get that and put it back there. So <laughs> <laughs> it would be perfect. <laughs> it's so weird. And yeah, it's like it's this, this big Galactus Funko. And then there's a Silver Surfer figure comes with it. It's like that. Yay, big. <laughs> Nice. I forget how much it is. I think it's. Uh, I mean, I think it's like forty bucks. I was like, oh my god. Oh, that'll buy a lot of uh, back issues, though, right? <laughs> I know. I was gonna say, you know, how many comics I can buy for that. But um, oh, and then yeah, because every once in a while, I see stuff in the store. Like um, a couple months ago, he got a Hulk figure. I mean, you know, a Hulk Funko. It's a little bigger than a normal Funko, but it's Professor Hulk from the comics from like the nineties and that David <laughs> yeah. Run. Because yeah. he's he's carrying the big guns and he's wearing the bunny slippers. <laughs> I remember, yeah. Because <laughs> I know me a little bit. Like, yeah, we saw that in our stores where I'm like, I was like, I was got that. <laughs> Hulk and bunny slippers. Pink bunny slippers. <laughs> I think I saw it was it Twitter. Somebody posted a couple months back. They're like, they had a they had two Professor Hulk Funkos. One was the comic one I was just talking about. The other one was like the MCU one. And they're like, oh, here's what would have happened if uh, comic book uh, Professor Hulk met MCU Hulk and like comic book Hulk standing over uh, MCU Hulk with his gun and you know MCU Hulk's like dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Peter David. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, before we get to this, yeah, so anything else new? Um, let's see. Uh, trying to think what uh, came in the latest. Oh, it picked up the, uh, the Black Widow trade mm. of the first six issues. Oh. I want to want to reread all of those and see how it all fits. You know, read it at once. And once yeah. Binge it. Want to binge it. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, you probably aren't reading like the current Spider Woman series, are you? No, uh, it's pretty good, but yeah, they're like 11 issues in. Like, right, yeah, like I said, Ray and his one co host are doing a uh, podcast on it. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. The art, the story, it's really good. That uh, Carla, yeah, the, the writer on that is uh, Carla, per- is it Carla Pacheco? Oh, is that? Oh, okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like I said, in the art's like really good. It's like it was at Pere Perez or something. Yeah, he's really good. Awesome. It's like, like I, said, I think it's like eleven issues in, and I think Ray and his Ray and them were saying, I don't know if it's the next issue or the one after. There's like a there's like a month uh, where we're not getting one somewhere. So yeah, there's gonna be a break. So oh cool. You want to catch up? But yeah, but they're really uh because like what was it the first arc? High Evolutionary shows up eventually. So. 
We not him. <laughs> Evolutionary. <laughs> uh, so any other good comics uh, stick out in your mind lately? Um, Immortal Hulk only has like four more issues left because I think yes, he. I know. I, I want to binge a bunch of those uh, once fifty hits. So yeah, and well, I also need to get the second. I think I need to get the second collection of that, and then that's about where I start on the single issues. So then I can just start reading it all the way through. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, that, I, singles or binges? Yeah, Mortal Hulk's really good. But uh, oh, the speculation's already starting. They're like, oh, who's going to take over after Al Ewing leaves? I guess there's a Hulk story in the uh, one of the Marvel's like free comic book day issues. Mm -hmm. it's written by chips the daughter's keys that are like oh is chip gonna be the new hulk writer <laughs> i guess it's possible but he's doing he's doing daredevil what, eternals eternals daredevil mm. wait is that him doing the eternals i thought it was somebody else is it chip or is that mm. well, who uh no that's not chip it's um maybe it is who does uh die from image and once in future is that chip um hold on i'm pulling this up i'm pretty yeah, i'm pretty sure it's not chip uh come on open up already uh, oh kieran gillian ah yeah i always get those two guys mixed up i don't know why yeah but i was gonna say i know chip's doing that daredevil i mean i love his daredevil stuff right now mm. And uh, I know he did some spectacular Spider-Man that was really good. He's the one who uh, had Jameson find out who Peter was Spider-Man. Oh. Interesting. Yes. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, what was it? I think it was like five-issue run. He did like a like a Star-Lord. Like, like I said, it was like a short like five-issue run or something. It was pretty interesting. Hmm. <sighs> Is that enough Marvel for you, kids? <laughs> DC time. <laughs> All right, should we get to these. Yeah, what? Uh, just kind of preface it. What uh, overall? What did you think? Um, well, I've read these before. The reread. Um, it's pretty much what I remembered. Um, I mean, I liked it, but I don't think I like. I don't know if I got anything more out of the reread than you know, that I never got before. What What did you think? I thought it could have been compressed a little, you know, stretched Locked out over three issues. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad we had the, I mean, MD Bright's a really good artist. Um, yeah. Although there's something about the way he draws Hal's face that, I don't know, just seems a little off to me. Is it, the, is it the face or the hair? Because his hair looks kind of. Maybe it's the hair. It's got, a, it's probably the hair. But it looks like there's a lot of hair there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the art was great. Um, I, I I felt like, you know, we didn't even really hit, what were we like 18 pages in? He was just flying around being happy. You know, after, I, after, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that first issue, I mean, I could do the summary, but yeah, he's just like, oh, I'm back. Oh, here's the old neighborhood. Oh, look, here, there's a ball game going on. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of, you know. Uh, uh, let's get a burrito. <laughs> Which hey, I'm totally down with. I, burritos are awesome. Super food, right? <laughs> Show off for the tourists. Look. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it it did feel a little padded. I, I thought it could have been yeah a little more concise. But uh, oh yeah, I think that, again that uh, that first issue is really a lot of you know just walk around and be like. Mm good to be back here's where here's the new status quo blah 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 <laughs> uh yeah because you know I've, i noticed something as i was rereading this and i think it may be maybe a symptom of those early 90s comics but it's really really wordy i mean there's lots of captions there's lots of there's lots of stuff and i don't you know i feel like in the interim, writers have started to pull back some and, and be 
that's wordy. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just what I've been reading, but uh, it, it seemed really, really wordy. Yeah, I forget what I was reading recently, but yeah, it was something 90s, and yeah, I, I did notice that, that it was a lot more wordy. I mean, God, I guess, do you think you got more story for your buck back then, or is it just more words? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, I mean, you want something wordy, go read like a Claremont X-Men. Uh, I wasn't going to go there, but you did, so I would totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> you almost can't see the art sometimes for those words. For those uh, balloons. Yep. <laughs> it's like takes you like five minutes to get. It takes you like t- no half hour to get through a page. It's like whoa, <laughs> whoa, that's a lot. It's pretty dense. That's really dense. Um, wait a minute, was there art behind all these words? I don't know. <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> Although I don't know what's better. I mean, what's better? What's worse? Like a, a really wordy issue or like a modern comic where you can like breeze through it in like five minutes. I don't know. I think that there's a nice balance. Yeah. Um, and I know this is one of those things I'm a, I'm a bit obsessive about. Um, Alan Moore did an interview uh, that wizard. a long time ago uh, on, um, you know, just general stuff. But one of the things he said is I count words excessive, you know, obsessively. Hmm. And the reason he does that is because he used, uh, when he was first getting started, some of the most popular comics were like the Mort Weisinger Superman, you know, it, Superman issues, right? So he counted words for various issues and broke those up to pages, and he came up with this kind of formula. Hmm. You know, this is the maximum words you should have in a single balloon. This is the maximum words you should have. If your, your total page has this many words available, then you divide those up into panels, right? It's a, it's a little math that you go through, and it's, I mean... He breaks his own rule, of course, but it's a it's a really good guideline that that I try to use because I don't want to be you know, I don't want to fill up those panels with words because there's all this great art behind it, right? So, as just kind of a good rule of thumb, I think it works out pretty well. I don't always hit it. Uh, nobody's perfect, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, do. You- I don't know, as a comic writer yourself, I mean, I know everyone's different, everyone operates differently, but it's like, do you really want a formula if you're like, I have to have so many words per page? I mean, is that going to... Just don't go over this many words. This is all you're allowing. Okay. (laughs) If you do less, no problem, but don't Don't go over less. Okay. (laughs) Okay. That's that's a little better. Okay. And, you know, like I said, more breaks that rule. He breaks his own rule sometimes, but he's just... You know, it's amazing how thoughtful he is about everything that he does, you know, when he's creating comics. It's kind of, you know, awe-inspiring. Oh, yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. that took us way way far afield. No, that's, no, that's fine. <laughs> Got to fill that Matt Kona slot. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean... I mean, Alan Moore, yeah, he, he's a great writer, but then um, does he take himself too seriously? Because it's like, you know, that, you know, now he just rants and raves about how dark comics are. And, you know, he even mm-hmm. blamed himself for Batman. He's like, oh my God, the killing joke. I think that's what turned, you know, that, that's what it mm-hmm. thing Batman to the dark side. Well, and, you know, and he was doing Watchmen. He had just finished Watchmen, I think, when he did Killing Joke. So he was obviously still in some dark you know places at that point you know because of watchmen and and all that but uh i mean i get he kind of feels responsible i mean i love his abc comics work um tom strong uh top 10 uh, prometheus prometheus is just brilliant it's i don't like it the best but i think it is the best uh there's a uh a double page spread where you have a Mobius strip, you know, the figure eight on its side. Mm. And the two characters are walking along this strip, you know, it's a path. And they're mirrored top and bottom because it's, you know, the Mobius strip. But you can join in that conversation any way, any point along the path, and it still makes sense mm. where you start and where you end. I mean, it's just brilliant. And then, uh, 
Oh, who's the artist? Uh, J. H. Williams, the third, I think, is the artist, it's, and he just executes. Like, it's just it's awesome. Wow, it's totally awesome. Yeah, some of the, yeah, like like guys like him, like Frank Miller. I mean, they have the, some like brilliance, but then there's other. On the other hand, there's like stuff. It's just like really because it's like Frank Miller. I think he used to be like a brilliant guy, but now it's just like more and more. It's gotten progressively worse over the years. It seems like he has like more issues with women, and then it's just like. I don't know, yeah, you know, at some point, do you become, you know, a parody of yourself? You know, I don't know the, I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it's like it's like you know, you do a, uh, you know, Dark Knight Returns, you do Batman Year One. It's like okay, it's pretty good, you know, Daredevil Born Again. Okay, okay, and then yeah, yeah. then you get like some like All Star Batman and Robin. It's like uh, late, late, late. Oh late. what? <laughs> what? I mean, making Robin eat rats? What? What? <laughs> Wow, I'm bat. I'm the Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here, let me read the synopsis for 26, and we'll discuss 26. Uh, okay. Of course, by the usual team: Gerard Jones, uh, like you said, Mark Bright, uh, penciler, Romeo Tangle, inker, Anthony Tolan, colorist, Albert De Guzman, letterer, and Kevin Dooley, editor. Uh, yeah, issue 26, cover date July 1992. Back in charge. How <laughs> uh, Jordan returns to Southern California finally as the only Green Lantern of Earth. He orders a burrito from a street vendor and gets recognized by a fan who asks for an autograph, which makes him feel even better about returning. Who <laughs> uh, also insults Guy Gardner. Yeah. <laughs> However, his nostalgic his nostalgic visit around Coast, Coast City catches the eye of one of Evil Star's starlings. <laughs> Just coincidentally, Hal Jordan's back, so of course Evil Star's back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hal, vi oh Lord. Hal visits the sanitarium where his friend Carol Ferris has committed herself while recovering from the effects of being Star Sapphire for so long. Okay, that's the other thing. It's like, so does she just tell them she has a nervous breakdown? I mean, she doesn't go in there and say, "Oh yeah, I was, I was uh, possessed a murderous by entity." Do you? Yeah. I, I doubt it. I mean, I mean, we live in a world of Superman and Green Lantern, but I guess you know, most I people mean, probably don't, you know, associate that as normal people have problems, you know. So I, I doubt it. Nervous breakdown. Nervous breakdown. Yes. <laughs> Uh, she offers to help pay for Hal's dream of setting up his own air transport company, but he turns her down, saying he needs to use his own willpower instead of relying on his friends or his green lantern ring. Oh, foreshadow. <laughs> he eagerly tells Carol that he has scouted a good location for his business and offers her a job as his employee. Man, you think that that business going and all of a sudden, boom, parallel. <laughs> uh, the Starlings will reveal to Evil Star that they have seen Green Lantern. He shares the information with Goldface and his gang members, Repo, Jocasta, and Piston. Okay. Gold <laughs> Goldface attempts to keep control of his gang, knowing that Green Lantern doesn't know of his plan or that the gang exists, so there is no reason to attack. Evil Star sees things differently, wanting revenge for having had his powers taken away from him by Hal Jordan, and he attacks Goldface. Eventually, Goldface regains control and sets his men to work spying on Green Lantern. Still, Evil Star hatches a plan to take revenge. Hal carries Carol to Montoya Bay, the place where he plans to open his company, and they visit a carnival. After some fun times, they head to a beach to be alone, and their romantic feelings seem to grow stronger. Unfortunately, they are interrupted when Hal spots one of the starlings on the beach, and he is attacked. He sends Carol back to their hotel before coming face to face with an enraged evil star. Bum, bum, bum. So, <laughs> I know you can like pee on a jellyfish uh, sting. What do you do for a starling? Yeah, there's even a joke about that in the next issue. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, the Coast City Angels were playing the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> And the Giants were winning, weren't they? I think so. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it, we're not there yet, but once you get to like, you know, Reign of the Superman and Coast City just getting wiped out, uh, Coast City Angels. 
Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess he can fly back and forth, but it's like, why Montoya Bay? Why not Coast City? I don't know. <laughs> no. You know, I guess it's. I mean, and it's never really touched on again because after everything, you know, when Rebirth comes back around, he's the he's a fighter pilot. pilot. Yeah. Yeah, he's back in the Air Force. So, what well, a dangling plot thread <laughs> that we'll never see addressed. I'm sure. What, Thirty years later. What the Air Force <laughs> business? Yeah. I mean, he only did a couple flights out of that thing, didn't he? Because I'm. I, think so because isn't there there's an issue coming up where he actually jumps out of the airplane without his ring isn't there well in this arc i mean well we'll get there but i mean there's yeah. something in this arc with that but i mean yeah. i think really got a couple of jobs before you know we got to get the emerald mm -hmm. play. <laughs> so i said by the time everything gets set up so again at this point i don't think they know you know em they don't know emerald twilight's coming at this point they can't yeah well, and it's also, I mean, it just kind of goes to show you that it's that really slow setup that the writer's been doing, you know, since the beginning. I mean, it's just taking a lot of time to get everything established, right? Oh, yeah, especially this issue. Yeah, it's just like, oops, that is slow. We're back. We're back. We're back. Flying over Ferris Air. It's like, oh, Carol's not there anymore. <laughs> And again, I mean, I know nobody, you know, how Jordan's not that famous, but yeah, when he's at that ball game and then he just like takes off out of the stands, it's just like, uh, you're not wearing a mask or anything, dude. Dude, there's the Jumbotron. They Surely they have a Jumbotron. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what happened? You know, you finally got your life back together on Earth and yeah, now your identity is going to be public knowledge. Uh, oh, is this the old neighborhood he used to live in? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Uh, good lord. Then he you know, talks about buying a new uh, ragtop sports car and just yeah, I mean, there's just so much. He does. He flies lots of loops. I remember seeing that mm -hmm. really well drawn loops, but you know, we're not. <laughs> yeah, I just thought this issue was kind of slow. Really yeah. slow set up. The stars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was just a lot of stuff. Again, yeah, I mean, Hal really doesn't do anything to the last like page or two, and that's you know, evil star and starlings. Really, yeah, really don't encounter him to like the last two pages. All right, <laughs> and what's that G in the corner? I don't know. <laughs> we'll get there soon, kids. <laughs> All right, it have something uh, to do with some guy. Guy. <laughs> Uh, all right, should we get to the next one? You bet. All right, yeah, because we'll get a little more action here. Uh, yeah, same team. Uh, and August 1992, the title of Superhuman Bondage. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> when Hal Jordan refuses to help Evil Star get his powers back, Evil Star traps him within a yellow bell jar of stellar energy. With Hal trapped, he captures children and threatens to drown them in the sea unless Hal cooperates. Reluctantly, Hal agrees and Evil Star pokes a hole through the bell jar. Hal uses the hole to send a beam which frees the children from the hands of the starlings. Angrily, Evil Star seals the bell jar again, but Hal's beam continues and blasts him from behind. Yeah, he gives him a boomerang blast. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes, a bla he makes a bad Sylvia Plath joke, too. While <laughs> he's in the bell jar, yeah. I know. But I know he's, like, he's like, you know what? You didn't know I can program them things? <laughs> uh, freed from the bell drawer, Hal saves the children and attacks Evil Star. However, when he tries to remove the Star Band, not Star Brand, kids, Star Band. Star Band. <laughs> the source of Evil Star's powers, it's not there. And Hal realizes that Evil Star has internalized his power somehow. Evil Star gives Hal one last blast and then escapes, leaving Hal no option but to take the children home and then plan his hunt. When Hal returns to his hotel, Carol Ferris is concerned for him and eventually decides that the emotional toll of being in a relationship with Green Lantern is too great, and they can only be friends. I don't think that relationship has ever recovered. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> 
Uh, Hal is disappointed and tries to hurt Carol's feelings by revealing that he already has a relationship of sorts with Rose Harden, who is living on Oa. Uh, I don't think about so. Yeah, no. <laughs> he storms off and works on his pitch for a loan so that he can start his business. Yeah, it was to hurt Carol. Yeah, I talked to a girl in the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <pretty> much. <laughs> I mean, what kind of, I mean, relationship? I mean, I'm trying to remember. Did he kiss her? He might have kissed If he kissed her, that's about the extent of it. It's, you know, it's. Yeah. I know she's on Oa, but it's like, yeah, I don't think we really had any kind of. Has she spent any kind any, really any time with Rose since uh, that first not arc? Since, <laughs> since, yeah. uh, not, not since that first arc, and then he left, right? Yeah, but that's my woman. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't think the way that works, man. I really don't. Wow. <laughs> uh, but the next morning, Hal fails to get the loan because he has no credit history to speak of. Well, yeah, that's what happens when you wander around taking <laughs> any job that falls here. Uh, outside, he meets Carol, who has obviously followed him to support him. He disappointingly returns home. Well, Carol goes to the financing office to see what she can do for him. Hal suddenly remembers that he needs to charge his Green Lantern ring. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but as he prepares to do so, the Starlings steal his power battery and Hal is left powerless. Uh, at the end. Yeah, but they don't. what they don't mention is he's, he's like in midair. Yeah. <laughs> he's flying high, yeah. <laughs> Chasing after them and it's like, oh no, my power's about to run out. <laughs> that end page my power <laughs> all right well so what did you think there's a little more action in this one yeah there is and I, I just this seems to me to be a uh, kind of one of those classic silver age plots where you know he gets his power battery still and loses his power and trying to be updated for the 90s and i yeah. don't know it just comes off kind of goofy because you know Oh, in mid charge, I forgot to close my window. I better go do that right now. Close the window. And all these, what, one inch tall starlings? <laughs> yeah, they're not that big, man. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that's kind of goofy. I, you know. <laughs> yeah, it kind of seems like, oh, hey, we got Howl back, status quo is restored. So, hey, who should he fight first? I know. An OG villain. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, Sinestro would have been the obvious one, but I think. Oh, is it he technically? That's got to be dealt with. You know that he's kind of technically dead, but that's going to be dealt with in another another book, right? Some guy's book. Kind of, sort of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again, except I mean, unless you count like you know. Green Lantern 50, the, you know, the last part of Emerald Twilight. I mean, think about this. Uh, volume 3 that had, what, 184 issues? Sinestra really doesn't show up. I mean, you know, we did that. Shows up like once, right? <laughs> yeah, there's, like, there's Cult of Cordians. But yeah, he shows up in, like, or supposedly he shows up in 50, but then they have to retcon that too. Yeah. It's like a clone or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, so I mean, I mean, they, Sinestra's out of play for a while. Yeah, I mean, we're talking... Probably what twenty years, you know, so, from the the end of the old series until the you know the re rebirth. Oh yeah, it shows after up rebirth. rebirth. So that's like what, like two thousand four. So I mean, two thousand five, so maybe fifteen years, fifteen to twenty years, something I don't know, like I that. Think we might be closer because twenty would be eight. Yeah. I mean, that's probably pretty close. Yeah. Wow, but then when he does come back, it's oh yeah, kind of awesome. You know, <laughs> well, especially once he starts his uh, Sinestro core. Oh, yeah, that's when he. Yeah. Starts making well, and, you know, he always how did he he referred to uh, Kyle as like the gutter rat or something. something so, you know, right. Super disdainful. Oh, you know? Alley, the alley rat. Alley rat. That's what it was. Yeah. We got to bring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh, oh, no. Remember, yeah, the star. Well, I guess one of the starlings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Collapses into a bunch of yeah, like you said, like an inch Maybe. little part. <laughs> yeah. Almost looks like bugs picking up his lantern. His yeah, power. I don't even know how that works, man. I just <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna go with it. 
I'm like, isn't Evil Star complaining he's almost out of power? How, yeah, how are they doing this? <laughs> uh, yeah, this whole this whole this whole arc was kind of like, I mean, it was fine, but it was kind of the pacing was kind of weird on this thing. Yeah, and it's. I mean, if you're you know, we finally established this is now Hal's book because you know John has Mosaic, Guy has the Guy Gardner series that's going to be coming up. This is Hal's book, and the first thing you do after doing that is he's back on Earth and he's fighting Evil Star. It just, you know, I, I, I think it could have been perhaps planned a little bit better not to be Evil Star and be something. Maybe that was the point. They wanted to go something that was smaller. And, you know, Evil Star is... Well, that too. I mean, his first day back, do you really want a, a big menace that's going to drag him away from this life again? It's like... That's true. I guess. And I don't know about the pacing too, because in a couple months, we're getting the crossover with The Flash. Mm -hmm. Which Lilith will be joining us for. Uh, so I don't know if the, there's just like signposts. And then what is that issue? Is it 32 or 33 when they start? What is that? The first law or whatever? Yeah, I think or third law. Third, third, law, law. third law. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. So I don't know if maybe they're just like they have stuff coming. So they're like, okay, we got three issue, three issues to kill. Three issues to fail. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Nothing. mean, it's not. It's not bad. I mean, it was. Wow. It was an enjoyable read. It's just I'm like, oh, this is not the Hal Jordan stuff that I was, you know, super signed up for because he's fighting Evil Star. I mean. What's next? Bank robbers and yellow lamps. I mean, <laughs> those yellow lamps can be dangerous, man. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We've established that, haven't we? <laughs> All right. So, here should we read the synopsis for the last one so we can uh, bet. talk this thing as a whole? All right. Cause, yeah, because I have a question about the first couple pages of this one. All right. So. Issue 28 uh, from September 1992. Of course, the title Powerless. How Jordan chases down the Starlings who have stolen his Green Lantern power battery before he has the chance to charge his ring. Unfortunately, the Starlings escape and How has only enough power left to either trace the battery or break his fall back to Earth. He decides to trace the battery and after imprinting the location in his mind, he begins to fall. Okay, here's my problem. With a full, once he fully charges that ring, he said he can track that battery, no problem, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, even if, okay, even if he doesn't want to break his fall, can't he send out like an SOS or something to John or someone to be like, hey, can someone like run the earth for five minutes and let me charge off your battery? You know? <laughs> yes, but as, as logical as that sounds, he get, he got into this scrape, so he has to get out of it. He can't, you know, always go call for help from a, I mean, from a storytelling perspective, right? I, was you know? say, I get the plot of the story where it's like, yeah, how's yeah. he going to prove that how's a hero even without the ring and mm -hmm. stuff? Yeah, I get that, but yeah, logically, I was just like, can he just like shoot? Even even if it's good north, he doesn't need a good Green Lantern. All he needs <laughs> yeah. is a battery. He just needs any battery. Yeah, yeah. any battery. I mean, and I I guess it was. I mean, it, how high is he? Because he survives the fall, but he's bleeding and bloodied, and you know we don't know how high he was up. But humans can't really survive falls from you know several hundred feet, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not, I, I mean, it, it's kind of ambiguous, like, like how high up he was. But also, luckily, he had that suit jacket because he kind of like yeah <laughs> tree branch to like yeah. Mm -hmm. He slows his fall on some tree branches. Like, did he did he say he did he break a rib or bruise a rib? Because yeah, he like at one point he lands like. And then I I was curious too. Once he gets the ring back, does he heal himself? That's what I was gonna say. Because yeah, he seems <laughs> fine once, once he charges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Let's. That was confusing to me as well. Yeah. I know. Yes. <laughs> All right, so Evil Star finally gets his hands on the power battery, feeling its power. However, he is discovered by Goldface, who demands to be given the battery. Evil Star tries to use it against Goldface, but the blast is, def is deflected by his opponent's yellow suit. He uses his own stellar blast to trap Goldface on the other side of a cave in, leaving himself and the Starlings trapped alone with the power battery. How survives his fall, though, not without injury. 
he forces himself to walk to a small airport where he breaks into a plane and hot wires it. <laughs> he flies to the mountain where Goldface's gang's hideout is because remember, he imprinted the location yeah. of his mind, kids. Uh, but has nowhere to land and crashes the plane. <laughs> He survives the crash and enters the cave entrance to Goldface's hideout where he attempts to discover what relation Goldface has the evil star and the theft of his battery. Okay, so yes, he's fallen out of the air, kids, and yes, now he's survived a plane crash. It's been a really exciting day. <laughs> exciting issue. Yeah. Uh, when he mentions what that he might know how to activate the battery, evil star bursts through the wall and forces him to do so. Of course, Hal does and becomes the Green Lantern, blasting his foes. Goldface escapes as Hal blasts Evil Star in unconsciousness. Hal, not giving a chance to fully charge, not giving a chance to fully charge his ring, passes out from the pain of his fall and the plane crash. Finally, he comes to he comes to before Evil Star and the Starlings, charging his ring and collecting his captives. He takes Evil Star to Oa in hopes that the Guardians of the Universe can contain him. Well, they contained them before, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, he, these are. People that escape from science cells, right? When the old timer went, yeah. I was going to say, I mean, know, they've, they've, more powerful, they've contained more powerful aliens, haven't they? I'm like, oh, yeah, I would say no big deal. Put him back in the science cell, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, again, I think this one, I don't know if it's the strongest of the issues, but uh, again, just some weird stuff. It's like, I guess we're, I mean, gold face is more like dealing with guy Gardner right now but it's like goldface was weird in the story so you know it's just like a i'll get you next time and it's like yeah. <laughs> it's very weird and you're a little dog too sorry <laughs> I mean, I mean, the guy who's going toe to toe with guy Gardner in issue 18 all of a sudden it's like we'll get me and my gang or we're gonna run away and we'll get you next time because <laughs> this is the real green lantern not guy Gardner. oh <laughs> true, true burn that's what I was, that was the other thing I was going to say. What if this had been Guy and he's his rat, ring ran out of power? I don't see it happening to Guy just because I, he wouldn't care. You know, he would like get in the charge, done, moving on. I'm going to go blow a bunch of crap up now. So it was, I mean, I feel like I, he was trying to update that whole powerless you know, Silver Age type story where somebody oh. steals the, the lantern and got no power. What does he do? I don't know how successful it was. I mean, yeah, it was, it's not bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't super great. And I'm, and I'm trying to think, I don't know this because I haven't read the, you know, the intervening issues to, to Twilight. Um, I don't know that the series gets any better from here until Twilight. Do you remember? Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of the, 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 the Flash crossover. Is, is I remember it fondly, so I, I guess it's good. Yeah, it's Hammond and Grodd. I mean, it's, yeah. I, I was just reading that. It's pretty good. Um, Third yeah. Law is the giant crossover with Legion and Legion 89. Yeah. Legion 90 or whatever. Yeah. 92, whatever. I haven't, and, read, I haven't reread past the, the Flash crossover yet, so I, I can't remember, but... So, I mean, honestly, where... Up to now, so we're 28 issues in this run. What do you think the best arc is, or best issue? <laughs> What again? But again, too though, the first twenty five he had to share with John and Guy too, though. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I still feel like even though it's slow, that first arc is the best of this series. Oh, the I first still, issues, yeah. Yeah, the first eight. Now I still feel like Mosaic is probably the best Green Lantern. You know, we get until Emerald Twilight, just because it's so different, so wild. Oh yeah, you know? oh yeah, probably. But yeah, like that first arc was like it's like even as slow as some of the parts were, it was still like a grand scale like mm -hmm. story. And I don't think we've ever come back to that that kind of scale since then. I think they're going to try with the third law, 
Yeah. Because I think we last time when we were talking when we talked about uh, Gantt's tale, Gantt shows up in that as well as uh, Percival. So they kind of make reference, I think, to Gantt's tale kind of throughout that, right? I think, like I said, I'm really well yet, but yeah. And that's that's Dark Stars, Legion, and Green Lantern. So that's the three groups, right? I think, yeah. Oh, that's that's right. Because uh, yeah, once we get there, we're gonna once uh, well, at least once once John Stewart's over there, we're gonna be reading some Dark Stars. I really haven't read any of that Dark Star stuff, so that's gonna be interesting. I haven't read it. I think I've read the first six eight issues long. You know, when they came out long ago. I don't think I ever read those. I think the only Thing, uh, thing exposure I've had to Dark Stars is in other people's books. So, yeah, I mean, Donna Troy becomes a Dark Star during the Kyle run, right? Yep. Did yep. they? Did John actually get recruited at some point? Yeah, John was wearing a suit for a while. And then doesn't he get injured? What is that? Like issue 74, 75, something like that. It's been so long. I'll take your yeah, word for I, it. We'll get that. We'll get there, kids. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, no, I mean, like modern comics, like I said, he had to share the book with uh, Guy and John up to this point. Like instead of issue mm-hmm. 26, if this was modern comics, this would be a new Green Lantern number one. How Jordan's back. Number one. <laughs> number one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, post New 52, the series after New 52, it was Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, wasn't it? Was that the name of the series? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the title of the series. So I don't know. Um, maybe I'll be surprised. I just don't remember much past, you know, these issues. Yeah, I, it's been so long since I've read them. There might be an issue here or there, but it's like, yeah, I'm not, again, like they said, like they did the whole Cal Rainer thing, you know, with Emerald Twilight because the sales on the book weren't good. But yeah, I mean, again, first 25 issues, they were all sharing this book. And now, you know, from this point on, I think how kind of like he starts getting his life back together and it's like, Oh, stop take a couple steps back there's a big cosmic thing going on okay mm-hmm. now how can get going again in his personal stuff oh stop another big crossover thing okay and boom emerald twilight <laughs> exactly and, then, and, and then, you know i mean green lantern was selling a lot of books at this time because you know it had mosaic it had green lantern it had guy gardner series it had the green quarter. lantern Corps quarterly i yeah. mean it had you know he was, I mean, 30, 30, say 40 30. issues a year of Green Lantern were coming out. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And, and plus, guy, you know, guy was in uh, Justice League America, Hal was over mm-hmm. in Justice League Europe. I mean, yeah, there was Green Lanterns all over the place. Yeah. I mean, it was, and then boom, it just stopped there with Twilight. But we'll get there. Yes. Now we're talking about 25, 26 through 28, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> Oh, oh wait! You're you're saying that there wasn't anything that good? What about the uh, Christmas issue with Doctor Light? We'll get there. I don't remember that one. <laughs> you don't remember when Hal takes uh, Carol the, the, to his family's for Christmas, like his brothers and stuff? And no, I'm I'm blanking on that. Oh okay, we'll god. we'll get to that one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, because I read it within the last year. Oh my god! Yeah, you gotta re- wait till we get there. <laughs> I must have purged that one. <laughs> and then Hal gets rid of him never to be seen again until he pops out of Cal Rainer's battery later, a few years later. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so anything else on these? I still think the art was, I really like oh, yeah. Mark Bright, MD Bright's art. Yeah. Really nice. I think, I think with a, uh, less impressive artist yeah this story would have been you know yeah even le- less impressive in our eyes with like well and i think the issue the second you know 27 and 28 they didn't feel as wordy to me um i think because there was more action and you know the the writer oh, yeah. got out of the way so well yeah in the first issue there was a lot of boxes it was for a couple pages because it was like all like house internal dialogue it's like oh, oh yeah Here's where I <laughs> work. Here, oh, here's where I caught the ball game. Hey, look. hey, I remember I used to drive a car like that. It's like, really? yeah, <laughs> come on, let's get, let's get there. <laughs> he acts like he's been in space. He acts like he was in space for a hundred years. It's like basically, you've, you know, you've really only been recruiting since like issue thirteen. Yeah, and you know, compressed timelines. What was he gone? A few months. 
if that yeah. again, <laughs> it was like what, like 12, 12 issues. So it was like real time, it was a year. So it couldn't have, yeah, couldn't have been <laughs> in the in the book, yeah. But yeah, like, oh, it's a good dog. <laughs> All right. Uh, just pulling up the schedule here for next time. Uh, Green Lantern Core next time. Green Lantern Core quarterly number two. Green Lantern Mosaic number five, which I believe is uh, Hal and John have their conversation. <laughs> I wonder what that's about. Uh, <laughs> huh. Maybe some. Maybe someone uh, Hal brought up this time. Uh, <laughs> could 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 be. So those two. <laughs> And Green Lantern 29. Olivia Reynolds is back. <laughs> yeah, because he had to mention that he was a toy salesman this issue. In 26, he mentioned that, I think, didn't he? <laughs> I think so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, this arc was full, full of foreshadowing. Mm. So, yeah, those three next time. Uh, quarterly number two, Mosaic number five, and Green Lantern 29. And then, oh, yes, already in two weeks. To be part of uh, our podcast wide Eclipso crossover. So in two weeks, Green Lantern, Green Lantern Annual One. Nice. For the Eclipso crossover. Uh, but also that week, Guy Gardner Reborn one through three. Very cool. I remember that Eclipso that kicked off the story has a big hunk of an Eclipso plastic diamond on the so it can't ever lay flat. I remember being so annoyed at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't. Like, how do you how do you stack them on the bottom? How do you, of the how, how do you bag and board this thing? Come on, man. <laughs> I was gonna say, was that like a was that all the copies, or was it like a newsstand version where that like that diamond was on there? There probably was a newsstand version. I don't remember those. I, I'll have to check into that. <laughs> oh yeah, you got two weeks. Check into that. Uh, Oh my god! But Matt Kona, if you cannot join us, you need to send feedback. Oh my god, he should send feedback if he anytime he can't join us, he should send feedback. As Guy Gardner, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That what a wimp! He just talking to himself the whole issue. This is where I found my yellow <laughs> ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, Kona, you got to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> He'll probably be down. He would be down for that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he would. So yeah, so Eclipso in two weeks and Guy Gardner reborn. And then in three weeks, uh Gorilla Warfare, this the the second issues, uh Green Lantern 31 and the Flash 70, because we're gonna be doing part one on comic capers uh with Lilith. Uh so yeah, Lilith is gonna join us for both parts. So yeah, comic capers, it'll be Green Lantern 30 and Flash 69. Of course, Will had to be there. And then, yes, come back here. <laughs> Part two, Green Lantern 31 and Flash 70. I was, like I said, I was just rereading that Hammond, Hector Hammond and Gorilla Grodd. Hector Hammond. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to look and see. Let's see. We just did 20. I wanted to look kind of through the covers that are coming up. So we got that oh, one. Yeah. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, and then in four four weeks, will Guy Gardner one through four? <laughs> nice, uh, leather jacket and all. So uh, it looks like the third law goes from thirty-two. I think it's thirty-two to thirty-five. Although the, the one might be an ep. I think that is there a pro. I think there's a, might be a prologue. Prologue is thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah. So I th yeah, because I think uh, episode twenty one yeah. have us thirty two at uh, Green Lantern thirty two through thirty five. Yeah. Wow, that's so that's a four issue arc right there. Yep. And then looks like Pat Broderick comes back for thirty six. Um, oh, we do get an Adam Strange crossover. Or Adam Strange shows up. Um, yeah, it's like it was at like thirty and thirty nine, I think, something like that. Yeah, thirty eight, thirty nine, eight and thirty nine. Yeah, because that's episode twenty seven. Yeah. Because and then yeah. in forty, we get another Flash crossover and a Dark Star. Like, oh, 
Yes. Well, Barry, you know, that was part of the return of Barry Allen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, because uh, what is that? Uh, episode 28. 40. Mm -hmm. I put Flash 40 with uh, 40 to 43 because I think it's 41 through 43 is the return of the Predator. Yes, that, that's where they finally deal with the Predator. Who it was? So Carol wasn't possessed by just Star Sapphire. The Predator's in there too. <laughs> Man, that sanitarium has their work cut out for them. They do. <laughs> they do. And then uh, we get a Deathstroke. Uh, I don't remember. Forty three looks. Oh yeah, because it doesn't. Uh, is uh, Deathstroke hired? To, uh, yeah, because I think he's hired or something to go after the Predator or something. Yeah, yeah. I think so yeah. Yeah, I and forgot then, that Deathstroke was in there. Forty four. Uh, oh, it's part of Trinity. Yeah, because that's going to be a big uh, episode for what is that episode thirty? Yeah, uh, Trinity one and two, Green Lantern forty four and forty five, Legion fifty seven and fifty eight, and Dark Stars eleven and twelve. Yeah, and then uh, Green Lantern forty six, which is the, uh, the destruction Rain of Coast City, <laughs> Reign of the Superman. Yeah, uh, yeah, because for that episode for thirty one, I have Green Lantern Corps quarterly number seven and green lantern 46 do you think we should add maybe like superman 82 you know like the final part of reign of the supermen maybe that that might be a good idea because you know it does involve the that's where the destruction actually happens right no 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 that's the actual yeah. one where they defeat the cyborg and you know basically oh, yeah. everyone, everyone flies off with their happy ending Mimo howls just like hey, there's a crater where my town used to be yeah and then 47 is a gl green a green lantern green arrow Team up. Yep. And then, then we get Emerald Twilight. Yeah. But yeah, no, I was I was gonna say no matter what issues we uh do, yeah, when we get to 46, we'll have to do like a little uh uh maybe death and reign of Superman talk. I mean, we won't cover mm -hmm. issues, but just you know, be like, okay, here's what happened. <clears throat> yeah, I mean the uh, because that was a big deal. Oh yeah. Back then, that was just huge, absolutely huge. I remember I, I read that Superman issue where they blow up Coast City. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. Is that where, is that how Jordan's? Is, <laughs> is he, I hope he's not home. What? <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, the 90s. The 90s. Gotta love it. All right, William. Anything else? I can't think of anything else. Um, I think we're good. We're oh, yeah. Moving the grooving toward number 50 and the introduction of Kyle Rayner and a whole new chapter in Green Lantern history. I cannot wait. Oh, you know what? Let me pull out my master uh, schedule here because, uh, yeah, I'll tell you one more. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the date for Emerald Twilight. But uh, meanwhile, I was going to say, I think we talked more with just the two of us and then when go to see <laughs> Well, but I love I love bouncing this off him because he's seeing it for the first time, which is awesome. Because you know I'm seeing it, I remember it a certain way, and then I read it now. You know, is it as good? I'm comparing all the time, and yeah, he's he's seeing it with fresh eyes, which is really kind of cool. Yeah, he's seen it with fresh. I mean, he's like he's read '90s comics like us, but yeah, a lot of the Green Lantern stuff. Mm -hmm. He's seen it with fresh eyes. Okay, uh, Emerald Twilight. Uh, episode 34 will hit the podcast October 8th so we'll probably record that two weeks beforehand so so probably the second half of September we're going to be recording Emerald Twilight so cool so after the summer yeah four months <laughs> and we get, I can't wait to get to the Kyle stuff yeah because it's just so different you know yeah I mean it's well, I mean, you have a different writer, you have a different, and you have a great artist. Uh, Daryl Banks is awesome as an artist, oh. and then Ron Mars is a good writer. So you've got a completely different tone, a completely different focus, completely different creative team. That's the one. You know, that, you, the cow stuff's what I really want to see if holds up at like as much as I remember. You know, and I'm. Isn't it a bit surprising that they didn't relaunch this as number one then? 
I know that was very sub- – you know modern comics, they would have. But, yeah, I, I'm oh, yeah. very surprised that they didn't. Kind of weird, but hey. I mean, uh, I guess they weren't in the uh, – at that point, they weren't throwing out number ones every two seconds at that point. But, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I mean, it was not one, 51. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, unless they were trying to trick people and, you know, all you Hal Jordan fans would be like, oh, wait a minute, this ain't Hal Jordan. <laughs> Oops. Wait, what happened? I don't understand. <laughs> all right. Now are we done? I think we're done. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, once again, congratulations, Matt Kona. Yep. Congrats. Uh, and uh rest of you, thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, so we threw out the... <laughs> Hell, we threw out the next couple months. So, yes, you got plenty of time, kids. Send your thoughts. And I can't wait till we get another uh, pro about getting to the Cal Rainer stuff. That stuff's finally on DC Universe, Uni- yeah, Universe Infinite. So, Russell and Ray and everyone can start sending us feedback. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So, yes, send your thoughts on all of those kids. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember to follow Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast on Facebook, Twitter. I can find links to all of our shows. Like, hey, the Qu- we're going to have another episode of the Quantum Zone coming this summer, kids. So, yes, you can find mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Twitter too. Yeah, so find links to all of our social media, find links to this YouTube channel, uh, links to the Patreon, more stuff's going there. Little Hellfire and I just recorded our uh, first Uncensored Wade's World, which Ray enjoyed thoroughly because the language is way over the top. All right, links, <laughs> links to that, links to merch, all in one place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot slash Capes and Lunatics. And please remember to support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio and Hunter Killer. Use the code Southgate for both of those for a discount. Yeah. Uh, and also go pick up uh, Pod Life, the book, now in digital and paperback. Uh, audio version coming soon. Learn all about the journeys of podcasters. And get that on Amazon when you do. When you get anything on Amazon, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network. And that man staring at the stars, Rob Master <laughs> Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Do. Oh. Your weak sauce. <laughs> Mark my words. All right. And find Daddy to be Matt Kona at Matt Kona on Twitter. I think basically any social media. Yeah, Matt Kona. Mm-hmm. All right. Will, Master of the Core, Master of the Quantum, <laughs> Master of the Kickstarter comics. Where can people find you? <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Walred. That's at W A L L R E D. Uh, that's at Gmail. That's at Twitter. That's at Facebook. You can find me all over the place there. You can also find Crossover Division at crossoverdivision.com. Here's a nice copy of it. Uh, and you can also find uh, Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com, which is pretty cool too. And then, uh, as Phil mentioned, uh, the Quantum Zone. Uh, at quantumzone.org, you can find all kinds of cool stuff about Quasar. I'll put it in my name. <laughs> I forget what we recorded the other day, but Lil's like, no, you got to hit the, you know, hey, boys, look in the party. Hey, boys, <laughs> look at the party. <laughs> okay, I keep forgetting, but um, I think I want to put take uh, the uh, cover for Crossover Division and uh, Diary of Night, maybe put it on the... Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, nothing has approached the drop that, uh, you know, we got during Star Blast. Uh, oh, the tentacles. God. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> wait, you mean? They aren't even attempting to enter our offices. That's the one. <laughs> Hope it's going somewhere nice. <laughs> All right. Those were some wild issues to read, weren't they? I know. <laughs> I'm, hey, I miss Matt Kona, and uh, I know you love this one, so. He gives me his bone. <laughs> That's just gonna have to be a running gag throughout the entire Green Lantern. <laughs> he gave me his bow. <laughs> I know, man. We'll be it will be like you know, new fifty two and stuff, and we'll still be he gives me his bone. <laughs>
Oh my god, hey Will, that's somebody's father. Slow down, know. we need this for drops. <laughs> See you later, monkey. Uh, like we're <laughs> See what happens when Zach Toad is on here to keep us in mind. That's right. He's talking to us. All right, so join us next week. Yeah. Orderly of a day and three later. Nice. Sounds like a joke. They don't want to. <laughs> We're seeing it coming. Zach Toad may be being back. I just sent you back. I can figure out what this looks like. We're thinking about you, Maddie. We should help. You gotta watch this. Help with a But until then, watch out for those starlings.